Hello and welcome to Empire of War Games. Today we are going to talk about the Las Vegas Open Preview Online for Warhammer 40k, Age of Sigmar and all the other releases, games and sets GW has. Alright, let's get into the video. First up, as always, if you are interested in checking out the articles yourself, you can find them either in the pinned comment below or the description. Alright, first up we are going to talk about the Eldar stuff. GW knows that the Avatar of Cain got leaked and it got leaked multiple times in many different ways and they acknowledged that in a recent Warhammer Community article. And now we have the full Avatar of Cain shown to us, not just the base model but also the different options. We have two head options and we have three different weapon options. We have a spear, a sword and an axe. The axe is apparently new, which is really, really cool. I saw a lot of Daughters of Cain players talk about kit bashing and using this guy for another model or as a proxy. I'm not sure for which model specifically, but that could easily work since this model is not super leaning into the modern Eldar kind of style, but more into the ancient god looking style. And that is perfect for kit bashing basically between Age of Sigma and Warhammer 40k. The next model and my personal favorite is Morgan Ra. Now this model is by far the best looking model I've seen today and probably over the last couple of weeks and months because Morgan Ra is first up one of my favorite characters and second up it, the model just looks badass. Tactical rocks yeah okay fine his pose is very daring but that is not the problem. Now my problem here is if you put the guy next to the new Dark Reapers the new Dark Reapers look a little bit like toy soldiers and this guy looks like the Dark Reaper himself badass he looks like he takes down a high fleet of Tyranids by himself and that is what I really like and that is honestly what I expected from the new Dark Reapers. I don't hate the new Dark Reapers but they look nothing like him and they really look like tiny toy soldiers next to him. I don't know how else to describe it. Morgan Ra's model is just excellent. I have no problems with this one whatsoever. It's just really really nice model. Next up we have Shining Spears. A lot of people have been speculating on them. We've been talking about them in prediction videos and they had very very old models and them getting an update is was important and they are getting a new design of the jet bikes in even a fancier variant and yeah they all get bare head options as per the Warhammer community article. The Exarch also gets different weapons which I assume includes a sword and so on. But yeah, these models, similar to the Ranger jet bikes, just look beautiful. The jet bikes really make a huge difference. And a lot of people now want GW to update all the jet bikes, even the models that are not that old. So yeah, it is what it is. The model looks excellent. I All of the updates for the Elder or the Craft Worlds thus far have been very tame. They, you know, GW is not doing anything wrong but they are not doing anything outrageous either and that is perfect because the Elder had a very modern design, they had a lot of round edges and everything looked very, you know, modern. That's why a lot of people when they just look at the new models think, wait, that's not how they looked back in the day and or the, the old models didn't look like that and that's what you want. I think Elder have a pretty niche and perfect design space for themselves and that is how it should be. I think those new jet bikes look amazing. And last but not least, here's a little group photo with the um, Warlocks missing, but everything else that has been teased or shown or previewed should be on the picture. As I said, the new Elder look pretty amazing. It seems that the vehicles, which are basically evergreens, and they will probably never really age outside of maybe detail, the vehicles will just stay around and that's fine. That's completely fine. They will update them sometime down the line, maybe in three or five years. But for now, they look amazing and the army looks great as well. Now I want to stay on the topic of Elder and this is not in the same order as the Warhammer preview online showed it but whatever. We are talking about Warhammer kill team and we are talking about Corsairs. These have been rumored, the rumors are true. We sadly only seen one model but that one model looks mind-blowing again and this model, the Corsair you see on the screen right now, looks way more daring. This model looks completely different than from what a lot of people were expecting. And this is the perfect design space for GW to really make a lot more weirder models, adding a lot more details, adding a lot more stuff where you wouldn't expect it on regular craft worlds. 
And this is perfect for them because they can be used for Dark Elder or Drukari. They can be used for Craft Worlds. They can be used in any combination or with any Eldari faction. And it is just nice because they carry different aspects of all of them. They look a little bit Drukari. They have the armor or the basic armor design from the regular Craft Worlds. And it just looks pretty good. I would have loved to see the whole kill team, but it seems that we have to wait. Uh, all of it will be part of a um, Warhammer Kill Team Nachmund um, Kill Team box. So it will be a two-player Kill Team box, basically. And I assume that includes terrain. And that is what I'm excited about as well. I really hope it's not basic Imperial terrain. Imagine it being Corsair Piratey Eldar terrain. Okay, just imagine that. That would be really nice. Other than that, yeah, we are getting a lot more... Nachmund stuff we are getting more books and kill team and it seems that this whole season so basically the next six months are all under the banner of Nachmund so it is what it is next up we are talking a little bit about age of Sigmar and we are getting another two-player battle box which a lot of people probably didn't assume because we just got fury of the deep and yeah this one includes the daughters of Cain and the nighthound and especially for the Nighthound, we are getting a lot more models. It not, it's not just a hero, but also ranged units, which a lot of the um, presenters of the, you know, the LVO Open Preview Online said that this is a novum for death units. I'm not really aware of how the range situation for the death um, faction looks like, but it seems that it is something special, which is nice. I really would love if they would have done that for every faction, because Age of Sigmar has this big problem where a lot of factions are missing units and they just dish out character models for those factions. And this is not how it should go. And one of those cases is here. So the Nighthound are getting a new kit and a new hero. The hero looks like this. It's basically a scribe that targets a enemy hero and that hero gets debuffed. That's all we know. But the Daughters of Cain, who have very few units similar to the fire slayers or the iron Earth deepkin from the previous two player battle box are only getting one hero and this is that hero uh, it's a gladiatrix and it's a nice model you can use it for drukari you can use it for daughters of cain it's just a beautiful model but it's not what the daughters of cain need the daughters of cain need more units in general okay the hero is fine but yeah, GW just needs to realize that units are way more important for these factions that just have, what, 10 data sheets? Yeah, it is what it is. The box looks really nice. The Nighthawk models look really nice. And yeah, it's just an exciting box. I hope it costs the same amount as the Fury of the Deep box, which probably means that the value here is going to be through the roof if we look at the units and the quote-unquote group picture here. Next up, we have a Horus Heresy release. We have Carbunda, which is basically a bloodthirst of corn. And this one looks really, really nice. What a lot of people then asked is, okay, well, if it's Horus Heresy and if it's the character series, what material is he in? And it's resin. And that takes the excitement down a whole notch. Um, it's, it's still a great model. It looks amazing. Corn is still my favorite Chaos God. But yeah. Making it resin is an instant turn off for me personally. But yeah, maybe you see that differently. I personally am not a fan of resin. And a lot of people have been obviously asking, is that all for Horus Heresy? And that was all of it, sadly. No to player battle box yet. Um, I'm obviously also starting to doubt those leaks a little bit now. But yeah, we'll have to wait and see. Next, we have a Warhammer Plus series releasing. This is going to be a longer lasting one. So that means we are going to get more and more episodes as time goes on it's called interrogator and it's coming sometime in spring interrogator is supposed to be grim dark it's supposed to deal with addiction and death and whatever else you have mature themes and this is exactly what most warhammer fans want i assume um interrogators are like the one step before getting an inquisitor i think and this is supposed to be kind of a down-to-earth warhammer 40k story um, from the perspective of a quote-unquote regular human. So make of there what you will. I'm not sure if this is going to be really, really good or not, but I figured it was worth talking about, or at least mentioning in the video. And last but not least, we have Necromunda Ash Wastes, 
I will not talk a lot about this one because I really recommend you look up the article online and look at the trailer because the trailer is really interesting and maybe a little bit more telling than what I can tell you here. But yeah, the presenter said that Necromunda is going outside, so outside of the hive, and that the world outside of the hive is even worse than whatever is going on in the hive anyway. So yeah, they are saying that it's going to be even more exciting than what we have gotten now. So I expect a lot of cool terrain, obviously, uh, because I personally don't play Necromunda, but Necromunda has some of the sickest terrain in Warhammer 40k on all of the GW uh, release sphere, kinda. So yeah, I'm very excited about Necromunda, looking forward to cool terrain or maybe kit bashable models. And yeah, we are going to have to wait and see. All in all, the RVO Open Preview Online was fine. It was maybe a little bit boring for anyone who, you know, likes Warhammer 40k, but don't particularly like Eldar or Craft Worlds. Maybe they were expecting some kind of, you know, uh, world eaters, maybe, but or Chaos Space Marines. But yeah, it is what it is. I personally found it very, very cool. I'm an Eldar player. I really love what I've seen. And the Necromunda stuff gets me excited because the models are very kit bashable and the new terrain will look sick. The Elder Corsair, one of the coolest models, and also I really hope it's not Imperial terrain in those kill team boxes, but rather Eldar Corsair terrain. Okay, that would be amazing. I would buy probably two of those boxes. And yeah, that's it. If you have any thoughts on the whole preview, if you liked it, if you didn't like it, drop it down in the comments below. I would love to talk with you guys about it, uh, discuss things. And yeah, I'll see you in the comments. Thanks for watching and give a thumbs up and subscribe if you enjoyed it. All right. Bye bye.